Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go through my top tips to help boost your decision making score. So before we get into the rest of the video, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the videos I make. So my first tip to help boost your decision making score is to make sure that you use the whiteboard effectively. This is so important because with the decision making section you're given so much information that you need to process at once. So the best way to be able to pick out the key information quickly is to use a whiteboard. On top of this you get given a lot of different data sets that you need to identify and based on this using a whiteboard allows you to pick out the key stats, key information, key words, whatever you need in order to make the best possible notes and be able to answer the question as quickly as possible. Something important to note with the decision making section is you actually have a bit more time per question than all the other sections but this doesn't mean that the section is any easier it just means that there's a bit more reading that you need to do to find the information that you need so that's why it's a bit longer. My next tip that sort of relates to the first one is to make sure that you identify the key information quickly. When you're reading through the decision making section you need to make sure that you read the entire paragraph that's given or the entire piece of text that's given to you. When you're doing this it can take quite a lot of time but the best thing to do is to make sure that while you're reading it you note down any key information that's given in the question. You might be given some comparative statements, you might be given some statements with certain names, numbers, etc. So if you can just note these down on your whiteboard or just remember them in your head, they'll really help you speed up through your testing and get a better mark. Just remember you have to read all the information that you're given, it's really important, and then after you've done that or while you're doing it, you want to find out the key information. Don't skip over anything because with the decision making section, it's just very easy to miss important things. My third top tip is to make sure that you go over probability and Venn diagrams. These are two things that come up a lot in the decision making section. So make sure you're comfortable going over probability, calculations, etc. because these can come up a lot in the exam. For example, conditional probability or something being mutually exclusive. If those words sound a bit alien to you, then you probably need to go over probability a bit more and Venn diagrams so that you become a bit more comfortable. Don't be too worried, I'm going to be going through some questions at the end of this so that you can get a bit more of a grasp of what you need to do. On top of this, you can do some old GCC foundation papers that are related to maths and statistics that go over Venn diagrams and probabilities as such. So don't stress too much, but make sure you're comfortable with Venn diagrams and probability because again, they come up quite a bit. On top of being comfortable with the probability and Venn diagrams, Diagrams. Make sure that you're comfortable with just like data and like graphs and tables in general. These can also come up in the exam, so it's important to know this. My next tip is to not use any outside information. As I said before, you're going to be given a lot of information in the decision making questions, and based on this, you should be making your deductions from this only. If you have some outside information that might be related to the question, do not use it. It's kind of similar to the verbal reasoning section where I was like, don't use any outside information. It's kind of the same here. Only use the information that's been provided to you and utilize the information that you have to answer the question accurately. You don't want to try and answer a question quickly because you think you know the answer from you know your outside knowledge because you'll most likely get it wrong. This is because the UCAT isn't testing to see if you have this outside knowledge from before. It's testing to see if you can use the information given, apply it to a question and provide the suitable answer. Bear in mind that the UCAT is not a knowledge based exam so just use the information that you're given and stop trying to be too smart. My next step for the decision making section is one that you've probably heard a million times but make sure that you flag guess and get back later. Flagging questions is so important in the UCAT. You need to remember that it's nearly impossible to answer each question accurately and to the best of your ability. That's because you're given quite a limited amount of time to answer the question. So one of the skills you need to develop is these educated guesses and an easy way to be able to guess and get back to a question later that you know you think you might have enough time for at the end is to flag it and once you've flagged it you can guess and get back to it later. A good little thing to do is to make sure that you have a little look at the Venn diagrams and the information you're given quickly if you're going to guess just so that you have some background information before you provide an answer. But again only do this for questions that you think you're spending too much time on because bear in mind that if you're spending too much time on one question you're probably wasting time on answering another question that might be a bit easier. Just make sure that every time you do a question you're thinking about how much time you're spending and making sure that you don't just prioritize answering the question instead of doing the easy questions first. I'm just going to say it again, you have to understand that you're going to have to guess answers in the UK and you've got to get comfortable with the fact that you're going to be guessing sometimes and that's okay. Everybody does that and you need to do it to get a high mark because so many people waste time trying to answer every single question and they just waste so much time that they miss all the easy questions at the end. It's not always at the end by the way, I'm just giving like an example. So yeah, don't stress too much about answering every single question accurately into the best of your ability. And my last tip is to make sure that you don't jump to conclusions with your answers. Sometimes you're going to be reading through some text and you're going to be thinking, okay, I think I know the answer now. But don't jump to that conclusion until you've read every single thing and you've made absolutely sure that your answer is correct. So simply put, just make sure you read through everything before you make a conclusion. So now I've gone through all these different tips, I'm going to go through some example questions to help you visualize what you're going to be expecting in the exam. Hey guys, so before I get into the questions, I thought that I'd let you know that I'm actually doing a giveaway with Medify. I've teamed up with them to actually give away a season pass to help with your UCAT. This season pass includes all the access for the different UCAT questions and a ton of help to make sure that you can improve your UCAT score as much as possible. If you want the details as to how you can enter please make sure that you check out my instagram down below where on my most recent post you'll see the instructions that you need thank you and i'm going to go through the questions now okay so i'm going to go through the first question now so if we look here it says at a fun fair not all the attractions are mechanical rides so i'm going to write here so not all attract at uh m okay when the fun fair is open fun is open 
all at are available except target and basketball. This is my way of shortening it. So you need to find your own ways to shorten the inf key information and write it down so that you can understand it. Here it says some attractions are not unavailable while the fun fair is open. So not unavailable means that they are available when it's open. And we do know that some are available uh, except for the target shooting and basketball hoops. So the first question, the answer will be yes because the conclusion does follow. All the mechanical rides in this fun fair are attractions. In the question it says not all attractions are mechanical rides. Here it says all the mechanical rides in this fun fair are attractions. We don't actually have a clear conclusion for this. Therefore, the answer has to be no. Next, it says, if an attraction is not available whilst the fun fair is open at a given time, it is either the target shooting or a basketball hoop. And this has to be true because if we look here, it says that when a uh, fun fair is open, all of the attractions are open except for the target practice and the basketball hoop. Next, it says, if the fun fair has a roller coaster attraction, it must always be available. Um, this is not true because we have not got any key information about whether or not it's open when the fun fair is closed or we just don't have enough information to make that statement so the so answer has to be no. And here it says the fun fair is not always open. Again, we don't actually have any clear information that makes us know when the fun fair is open or closed. So the answer has to be no because it might always be open. Again, we've not been given enough information to make that definitive statement so we'd put the answer as no. Simply put, you can't make the assumption that the fun fair is closed at points. So again, we can look at the answers now. And here you have some time to look through the different answers and the explanations. Again, this is a really good feature for Medify is that it gives you a breakdown of each question that you've answered and you can see why you're right or wrong. Okay, so here's the next question. This again shows you a Venn diagram example, the ones that I said come up quite a lot in the decision making section. Uh, these are the four answers here. Again, the way that I'm editing this, it just makes it easier if I do it like this. So just bear in mind, these are the four answers. So we've got three, six, seven, and two. So let's go through the question. So it says, based on the diagram, how many students own a Beagle and a Rottweiler, but not a Great Dane or German Shepherd? So now we know that the students need to have a beagle and rottweiler and not a great dane or german shepherd we can tell that the beagle is this square and this rottweiler is this trapezium here pretty sure it's a trapezium if it's not i'm sorry i haven't done maths in time so yeah um so we need to find one that only overlaps with this square and trapezium and it's quite a simple one because if you look right here it's three so the answer must be three and we can check that now and here's your explanation here so you can look and see if you're right or wrong. Okay, here we have another question. Again, here are the answers, and I'm gonna go through it now. So it says, the layout below was proposed for a redesign of a city. Each of an ice rink, so we should write these down. So this is ice rink, airport, university, house, and train are represented by one individual shape. So the ice rink is a four-sided shape, and then the uni is equidistant between the airport and the train station. So these are all the notes I need to take to have all the information I need. Instantly, I know that this is the ice rink because this is a four-sided shape, uh, the diamond that is. So we know straight away this is the ice rink because the only other four-sided shape is this one and that's been taken out by the house. Now with the rest, we can't work that out right now. So let's read the rest of the question and see. It says, which shape represents the university? Instantly, I'm thinking it has to be this pentagon and that is because this pentagon here is between two separate structures. And because we know that these two are not the airport and train station, it has to be a shape that is between these two separate shapes. These have to be the airport and the train station, you know, either or. So the answer here is pentagon and we can check that now. And yep, it's correct. And here is the explanation here. It's important to note with these styles of question, because this is quite an easy question comparative to other ones. You should note how long it's taking you. So you should be seeing which ones you're strong at, which ones you're weak at. And once you find out your strong points, you know that those questions are going to be the ones you can answer quickly in the exam. And when you find your weaker sections or your weaker style questions, you need to make sure that you flag those and get back to them later so that you can do all your easy ones first, like these ones, for example. Okay, so here's my next question for the decision making section. So let's read through it slowly. It says, all Bamiers are faster and all Fuzilers are slow. What a great name. Uh, the boat is either a Bamia or a Fuzilla. Place yes if the conclusion does follow and place no if the conclusion does not follow. So here it says, Bamiya cards are faster than Fuzzle. Firstly, you might be thinking that this can't be true because we don't get any cards mentioned here. But because they're saying that this brand is faster than this brand in general, we can extrapolate that and assume that the cars are also faster from this brand compared to Fizzlers. So the first answer would be yes. Next, it says, Fizzlers are not faster than Bamiya's. Instantly, this is a really, really easy one. This is true because here we go. We can see that the Bamiya's are fast, Fizzlers are slow. So this one has to be true. The next statement says, all boats are either Bamiya's or Fizzlers. We've actually not been given any extra information to state whether or not we have another type of boat. So we can't make this conclusion definitively. So the answer here has to be no. Next, it says, people wanting to travel to a particular destination quicker should board the Fuzzler. Now, this is not true because we know that the Fuzzler is slow. So if you want to get somewhere quicker, you want the faster device or the faster vehicle. So the Bamiya's has to be the answer. The last statement says, if a boat is fast, it must be a Bamiya. Now, similar to 
this type of question here. We've actually not been given enough statements or sorry, enough information for us to make this statement. There may be other boat types that are fast. We just haven't been given that information. So based on the information we've been given, we can't make a conclusive statement. So the answer here must be no. So we're going to check the answers now. And as you can see here, uh, the first one is yes, then yes, then no, no, no. And we can check the answers and we've got yes, yes, no, no, no. So yeah, so here the explanation explains how you should have answered the question, how you should be thinking about it. And you should be using these principles to answer your decision making questions in general. These yes and no style of questions are quite common. So you need to make sure you get comfortable with them. And bear in mind, taking down key information for each question is so, so important because it allows you to shorten the amount of time it takes because you don't have to keep rereading the statement every time. Just write it down in your scratch pad or on a whiteboard and you'll be good to go. So that was my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that you found the tips useful and me going through the questions quite helpful. If you want help in all the different other sections, make sure you check up the playlist up above here or here. I'll also have each section linked down in the description so you can access it quickly. On top of that, check the description for any important resources that I provide for the UCAT. Lastly, if you could, I'd really appreciate it if you like, comment, subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel. And you can also check out my TikTok and Instagram for more content based on the UCAT. In the future, I'm going to be making videos about the personal statement, interview practice and different things to do with dental life. If you guys are interested in that, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with anything that I do. And if you have any video ideas or anything you want me to do, make sure you DM me on Instagram or ask me in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.